This is Professor Shapiro, known on the internet as Harry Hawk, and I wanted to go a little bit more into depth about the Google Merchandise Store. This is the third video that I've created, and we're starting, as always, at the Audience Overview, which is the default opening view, and we're looking from January 1st to January 12th. Today is January 12th as I'm recording this. And what I, again, we can see there's 25,000 sessions. Um, we can see how many pages per session. Um, we can even go in and start to look at revenue as we have in the past. Um, one way to get more information is to click on this full report here. And we start to see revenue. Revenue is around 177000 for the period. And uh, we can see it by language, which is often very close to country information. Um, and we can see, again, how many sessions, how many new sessions, new users, bounce rates, how many pages per session, and so forth. But what I want to do now is come down here and look at top conversion paths. When we walk into a traditional store and buy something, you know, our path into the store is generally always the same, right, through the door, through the front door. But our path to get to the store may be very different between ourselves. You may come from work. I may come from school. Uh, you, Someone else may come from their friend's house. But even if you go back to the store on several different days, your path to the store is not always the same. You may not take the same route. Uh, you may take a bus or a train, or you may drive over and so forth. But these are the top conversion paths for the store. So, for example, and we're, this is just the top 10. We could increase that to 25, for example, which I'll do. When it was just the top 10, it resulted in showing us about 2,900 um, conversions. Or rather, I'm sorry, this is the new data. Um, even though the site has sold 177,000, these top 25 that we're looking at refer only to this amount of income, $101,970.43. And I can start to explain this. The top one is someone who's come direct. Direct means that they entered the website address directly into the browser, and the people who have converted the most have come twice. They didn't buy on their first time. The next one is someone who's been referred to another site. They came once through that referral, and then they came back direct. So it's like taking a friend to a store, and then later your friend goes back by themselves. Referral, they clicked on a link on some other website. But look at this. The top number three method is someone who's come back three times. And as I've said earlier, I've done some analysis. A lot of the people who buy on this site come back four or five or six times before they make a purchase. Number four is organic search. So they've gone into a search engine. They found the site, and then they've come back direct. So almost everybody here is coming back direct. We have to get to the sixth position to see some people who started to buy without having a direct entry in their path, and that's 127 conversions, purchases, worth about $4,000. But as we go down here, again, we see more direct, more referrals, and we have to come all the way down to 23 before we find paid search. And Google makes a lot of their money on advertising. 
Certainly advertising on a website is a great way to get people to your site. They are not spending a lot of money advertising this site, particularly in the period of time that we're talking about. They may have spent more during the holiday season. And this is a store that since it's been open in the summer of 2015, it's now the, right, the winter of 2017, has done about $3 million. So they're not, this is not a super high volume store. I'm sure Amazon does millions of dollars an hour in sales. But what's interesting is that the people who've come from paid search have come twice that way before they've made their purchase. And that's only 20 people. Sorry, it's only 21 people. And accounts for about $1,113. And so we'd want to know how much they spent on that. that. That's one of the things we can discover. I'm going to set this back to the to the 10, top 10. Um, I can see that this conversion rate is not changing. I thought it was. That means that this is all of the track conversions don't equal um, the total conversion, right? Which is about 177. Um, and there are other, other dimensions that we can look at here to, to understand, uh, for example, the landing page, um, what part of the site they came to. For example, this referral group, and notice the numbers have changed. These are, these are not the same numbers because it's sorted differently, but these people came to the Nest site, to the Nest site. These people came to the homepage. Um, this, this person came to the homepage. We see a lot of the people here who are going to the Nest site um, because that is one of the more popular and, again, one of the more expensive items. So that's uh, going to influence the, the sales numbers. Um, people who are buying pencil cases or hats and so forth aren't going to be high up in this list. Um, so now that we understand how people are coming to the site, where they're landing, and the fact that not everybody enters through the front door, I think that's an important part. I want to look at the shopping analysis here. There's two items, shopping behavior and checkout behavior. I'm going to start with shopping behavior. Now, this is under conversions. And so I think this is important to understand. We've seen this several times. There's been about 25,000 sessions. And we know that about 4%, 3.5% have purchased. Well, what happens between the people who purchase and don't purchase? And, and and we can start to see it right here. Those 25,000 sessions ended up with only 880 purchases. And now this number is a little bit different than the number we saw earlier, but that's okay. That's one of the things with this analytics that we're looking at, that every view, every way of looking doesn't always match up with others because some data is being filtered out, changed, or excluded. But look at this. 2,400 sessions added something to the cart but only about a third of them actually made the purchase. In fact, 1,300 have started the checkout process and have then abandoned it. And it's a particularly complex checkout process as we saw in one of the earlier videos. And so we can see of all these sessions in this time period, over 20,000 of them, about 80%, did no shopping activity. Um, product views, and we'd have to define what a product view is, accounted to only 20% of the visitors. 
19.5. And then 52% of the people who viewed product didn't even try to purchase it. They didn't add anything to the cart. And so we can see uh, what's happening. And we have, um, we can see that new visitors purchased about 300 transactions, but it's the returning visitors who did almost 600. So again, many of the purchasers are coming back more than once. Think about those conversion paths, the people who came by referral, the people who came direct, the people who came from the search engines, the people who came from paid search. You can think about when you create a store, all the people who come to your site, and you can think of all the people who don't shop, like this group here, and all the people who didn't add anything to the cart, or all of the people who abandoned their cart. And I want to say this this way. You can think about all of that from a very negative perspective. Most people don't shop. Most people don't put anything in the cart. Over half the people who, you know, put something in the cart, abandoned the cart, 48%. And of the people who start the checkout process, another 35% just stop in the middle. You know, it's like walking up to the cashier in the store and you have something in your cart you don't want. You, you just leave the cart and walk out of the store. So there is a lot of e-commerce thought process and, and money and effort spent to try to get people who abandoned the cart to come back and finish the purchase. Uh, and we, we can, right now we're looking by sessions. We can click this button here to just look at abandonment. So we can see that returning new visitors abandon more often than returning visitors. So the returning visitors are more twice as likely to purchase or purchasing twice as much, I should say. Um, but they're abandoning about the same. But, but look, the, the returning visitors are shopping more, right? When we look at this, it's the new visitors who have, who have the most no shopping, um, where the returning visitors, uh, less. The returning visitors are adding things to the cart more frequently. They're, they're abandoning the cart less. 60% of the new visitors abandon the cart and uh, only 40% of the returning visitors. So one of the things that we need to think about when we think about e-commerce and creating websites and doing business, whether it's business to consumer or business to business, we need to think about not the group that comes and buys, although certainly there is a percentage of people who will come to the site, immediately purchase something, but we need to think about everybody else and how we get them to come back multiple times in order to complete that purchase. Again, when we come down to uh, top conversion paths and we look at the people who've come direct twice, three times, four times, five times, and so forth, and we look at other reports in other videos that I've made previously or other videos I might make, or as you go through this yourself, there are ways of looking at uh, how people convert. Um, we can even look at this. This is all conversions. In other words, there were 6,000 
thousands. There were six thousand seven hundred fifty-one conversions, including those who converted the first time. And there is a lot of people who who who, who converted the first time, but more who've converted the second time. Here's the first. So uh, about half converted the first time, and you may be happy. Well, look, three thousand seven hundred eighty-one. 83 people uh, converted the first time they came to the store. But there's an equal number who've come back the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh time. If we had stopped and didn't try to get anybody to come back, of course, some people would come on their own. uh, But it's it's important that we understand that people are going to come um, multiple times. And when we look at the customer experience, user behavior, we know that it is the people who have found the site a few times, then these are the people who may come back and Google, Google analytics doesn't keep a lot of current data. They only keep stuff for 60 to 90 days. And we see that here again, here's somebody who converted. We've looked at this before, uh, $298, 15 sessions that they've accounted for. And in this case, they were acquired on January 6th, and they made the purchase. Um, here, here is the purchase. And by the way, they've come back since the purchase. Um, and that's also something to consider in the statistics. There are people who will come back. They've already purchased. They're not necessarily going to purchase uh, again. So here's a case of someone who's come recently. It took them a few days. Um, they per- converted on the, on the f- 10th. So it took them four days, uh, to convert. Here's another one. This is a, a $25 worth of revenue, but look, the acquisition date was October 4th. Now I, I suspect that, you know, this person may have made prior purchases that they, they may they don't show up here and again because google isn't keeping that number around um but it can in this case where we have a purchase on the 5th of january from somebody who was first acquired on the 4th of october so october november december january call that four months to make a 25 dollars purchase and we can imagine all the times that they've come previously. Again, as you can see, that data is missing from here. And so there are other tools, customer relationship management tools, and other methods that folks might use to make this, or rather keep track of all this data. Um, but I just want to leave you with the idea. Again, we're going to go back here um, to this shopping behavior that not everybody's going to purchase. Not everybody's going to purchase the first time. Not everybody who puts something in the cart is going to buy it. And so this brings us back to the guest lecture with Sam, where we need to think about who are the best customers, who are the people who are most likely to buy? How do we find those people? How do we bring them back? And how do we make those people uh, the ones that are out there in social media and so forth? And this is the the checkout behavior. Um, this is the 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 progression through the checkout, billing and shipping, making the payment. Um, some people uh, will make a review. Um, I'm not sure that that should really be here. I mean, I would imagine that the review happens after the transaction, um, but they have it listed here. 
And then here are 889 sections. So when we think about when someone goes into the shopping cart, where do they drop off? Some people, their credit card may not be valid and so forth. And again, we can see um, that the returning visitor um, are much more likely to make a payment or to complete the transaction. So all things to think about when we're thinking about who our customers are, how do we attract them? How do we bring them to our site? How do we get them to come back three, four, maybe five, six times before they'll make a purchase? Who are our best customers and all of that? This is Professor Shapiro, known on the internet as Harry Hawk. I hope everybody has a great week. Bye-bye.